I've actually spent virtually all my working career in India. Uh, I've had exposure to multinationals, but in India. And the last few years, I've been traveling abroad quite a bit in connection with VC work. But I'm as Indian as any of you. So what we are going to do today is uh, take you through how a VC looks when you come and present a plan to a venture capitalist. How a VC looks at a plan. And what we are going to do today is uh, take you through how we would be thinking in our head while you are talking. I just happened to meet one person who presented a plan and a couple of others too. And, and there are some things I say and there are some things I'm thinking, but now I'm going to expose him as much as the rest of you to what I was thinking while he's presenting. Right? So, but before we start, I just want to know how many of you have written a business plan? <coughs> Three of you. Four. And how many of you have met up with a VC? One, two. So maybe before I start, maybe I should tell you what a VC is. A VC is a venture capital company. It's a firm, it's, a, it's an institution, it's a financial institution. And its purpose is to give money to startups. And unlike a bank, we give money to startups and take shares in view rather than taking some other asset that you might have as collateral. So in case that enterprise doesn't work, we just walk away. So there is no liability left of the founder, which is you, in case this whole thing doesn't work. So, so therefore, to some extent, your risk too is mitigated. Because on the other hand, if you had gone to a bank and taken a loan and the enterprise didn't work, your collateral would have been taken away from you. And that's a large price to pay. So the VC system operates to ensure that more and more people get into entrepreneurship. And there is somebody who will take the risk along with you and will therefore also take the advantages when there are advantages. So he will share the profits with you as any other shareholder does. So this is very much like having an IPO. You have a large company, you list it on the stock exchange and then you ask others to contribute money to your company. And if the company does that, you issue dividends. Similarly, in this case, you have not been able to go to a stock exchange because you are too small. You could go to a VC and the VC will give you money and the equivalent of dividends is what the VC makes out of it. Right? So he will one day sell your shares and make all the money back and hopefully more. I am going to run this very simply. I am going to run this as if you have a business plan and I am listening to your business plan and I am going to rate your business plan to see how good it is or isn't and whether I am getting all the answers that I need to hear before I cut out a check to you. So that's the format I am going to follow. So what we would like to see in a business plan, four of you have done it, but for, for the rest, the first is that there should be a problem, and we'll get to what a problem is later. But, but this is really the format that we'd like you to follow when you write a business plan. And the first thing that you have to do is convince the VC that the problem is worth tackling. If we are not even convinced that this is a worthwhile problem to solve, all the rest is dross. It's a waste. So the first thing is, make the problem large enough to convince us that this is a lovely problem to solve. Right? And then you come to solution. So the next thing you will tell us is, what's the solution that you are proposing? And then the third is, what's the market? And the fourth is, what is the team? And then the fifth is, operations, uh, sorry, opportunities and threats. And the last is financials. 
And at this stage, because this is a learning stage company, and this is the first time you are doing it, etc., etc., the financials mean little or nothing. Kya banaomiya on an Excel spreadsheet? It means nothing to you, it means nothing to us. So we are not really looking so much at the financials as much as we are waiting to get excited along with you and getting passionate about the problem and the proposed solution. So if we don't have these two in place, the rest of it is nothing. The financials will work out with you later. That we will all get rich is the, is the intent for both of us. But before that, convince me that this is a problem to solve. Right? So the problem, this is what I said. Who all is it impacting? How many people? Is it only people who write with their left hand? Oh, that's 40% of the population. Then it, is it people who can write with either hand? Then it's all 100% of the population. Tell me who all is it impacting? Right? The next is, what is the extent of the Is it a nice thing to have? Or is it that without this, I'll probably die a slow, agonizing death? Tell me what the pain is, and what's the extent of that pain? The third is, what is the cause of pain? And the fourth is, what is the benefit of relief? Not what, not how we will solve the problem, but if we were to solve the problem, what will be the benefit of that release? That's what we want to hear with. When you are articulating the problem, remember when you come to a VC, you have one <coughs> After that our attention is drifting. This is going to take 10 minutes. This is all the time you have to articulate the problem. And you better make it thick. You better make it very, very solid about the problem. So then what do we do? So we are waiting, listening to whatever you are saying. And we are awarding marks, so to speak. We really don't. It's not as if we have a chart and we are grading you from 0 to 10. It doesn't really run like that. But this is just to give you an idea of how we are thinking. So let's let's say that I actually award you one from 0 to 10. If the problem definition is very subjective, I'll give you a 0. If the problem definition has a customer specificity, these sorts of people, People who write only with their left hand, and people who do only this, and people who do only that, which constitutes this percentage of the population. Oh, then we are talking. Then I will give you a 10. If you have also quantified the pain, that to all these people, this is the amount of pain that is happening, then you are going to get more. <laughs> Similarly, the quality of data that you have. When you say that this impacts a thousand companies or this impacts this whole industry, who says so? Does you say so? Well, then I don't believe it. What do you know about this? So if it is anecdotal, which means when you just met this guy in a bus stop and he told you this, oh, it doesn't mean much to you, to me. So we are looking to see whether you can support any data point that you get from multiple sources, not just one. And you say, this guy says, one million people have this affliction. This guy says, three million people have this affliction. And this guy says, 500,000 people have this problem. So, what am I doing? I'm saying it's between 500,000 to three million. So I take a number of just 500,000, the lowest. But here are the three sources of data. Right? So then we are all convinced that we are grappling with a real problem and that more than one person has looked at this problem and attempted to quantify it. Customer validation. Let's 
say you are taking a problem for the transportation industry and you come and say that this is what the transportation industry wants. This is what they are waiting for. And you have provided some of these points. Even then, have you gone and met one transporter? I would have liked you to have met three. Three potential customers to ask, is this really a problem? We are not even discussing solution. But is this really a problem? Is this what keeps you awake at nights? Is this what is turning you crazy? So have you met one? Have you met many? That's what we'd like to do. Because otherwise, I'm going to be thinking in my head, oh, I don't think he knows what he's talking about. Remember, this is at a stage where you don't even have the solution in place. You're looking for money, right? But you should still have gone to a customer or five and validated that this is a problem he would like solved. Otherwise, there's no point. In you already getting to work on creating the solution and then finding that there are no customers. This is not his first problem. So I'll give you an example. Last week, Ramesh and I, we met up with somebody. He is into fake currency notes detection. I mean, he doesn't make the currency notes. He is getting excited. Even I would have forgotten what somebody like that. That's a better business than identifying notes. The pause was That's long. The pause was long after <laughs> fake currency notes. <laughs> He might not even need funding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would love to invest in it. <laughs> so this uh, young man has actually developed an extraordinary machine. Uh, and it can actually detect uh, 12 different points at which a currency note can be faked. Which is better than most machines or all machines that you see in the market. Or so he says. Uh, terrific. So then I said, Who's the customer? Who's going to buy this? So he said, he's, he had a good slide, and right? the slide says petrol pumps. Because they handle a lot of cash. Jewelers, they handle a lot of cash. So I said, so who have you met? Because I'm otherwise very excited by the problem. You know, he crossed the first two levels. He has quality of quantity of data, everything is perfect. So I come to this point. So who have you spoken to in petrol pumps? So he said, I have not spoken to any. So I said, I'll do it now. So I pick up the phone and I called the head of Bharat Petroleum's marketing. And I said, I have a person in front of me and he said, this is a big problem. Uh, do you want it solved? So the guy, problem? Is there any problem? Yeah, problem. Fake note aata hai kisi se aur ek ko de dete There is no problem. This is not our problem. I'll tell you what are the three big problems that Bharat Petroleum has today. This is not it. Ye to karna hi nahi hai. I mean, this, we are not going to spend time and money trying to solve this. There is no problem with this. So then I come to this guy and I said, at least this market segment is out. Ab aur batao kaise baat kare. So that's what I'm saying. He could have avoided that if he had only gone and spoken to this who he perceives is going to buy his product in the thousands, right? So, so you need to think <coughs> to get this right. Please do speak to customers. So this is here, Pro uh, what is the problem? And this is what you want to get us excited about first. If at the end of this point itself, if at the end of the 10th minute we said, wow, terrific, tell us about the solution, tell us about the solution, then you know you have brought us up to this point. Right? I did have a question on the last slide, sorry. Please. The question is, uh, when you want uh, data, you yeah. have market share and so on, for example, um, multiple sources of data. It is not really expensive to buy just recent data. So, what sort of data would you accept? I'm, I'm uh, saying, show me something to say that this is a problem at all. 
I come from this extraordinary level of cynicism that such a problem doesn't exist. And you come with this extraordinary passion that the whole world is waiting for your product to happen. So how will the two of us meet? So, so we need to find a way to do it. And you would be surprised what is available freely as, a, uh, as information. Just as an exercise, I'm, I'm, I'm working on a project now myself. And I was just surprised at what the government of India publishes. However, faulty maybe in terms of data collection or analysis. How much is available? I was surprised by how much is available in the Manorama yearbook. Mm. Which costs all of 250 rupees to buy. Yeah, but the amount of information, tremendous. And, 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 uh, and it's one source of information. Now I'm trying to validate the same from two other sources. Right? But I'm just saying start somewhere because I am at a point where I am saying there's no problem. Right? That yearly subscription, uh, I'm sorry, I'm dejecting here, outnumbers a lot of dailies. That's so famous a book. But, but more importantly, just get, there, is a, there is an iPad app <coughs> which gives you information that the US government puts together and that's all of $10. I can give you the name of that. I've got the, I downloaded it. Uh, tremendous. So I'm, I'm, uh, I, I would like you to bring me to some level of agreement with you. Key problem may kuch hai da. Otherwise, we are not even getting off the ground. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. If I can add uh, one more uh, comment to that is, I think it's the most important thing over here is finding the problem. And in fact, most entrepreneurs find the solution before they find the problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, so. Finding the problem and articulating it is, I think, the most important step, as uh, I've just been saying. So in terms of data, if you get data from, uh, let's say, Gartner report and any other report, at least for us, if you get it, then so the problem is already been identified. Mm -hmm. And they tell you, okay, you're going to be in this quarter, you're going to be in this, that those data research reports, I think, are less uh, important than how you find the opportunity and all of that stuff. And that's what we're trying to get at. So is that okay? Yeah, thank you. So now, so we got over the problem. You got us convinced, right? The first 10 minutes are already over. Right? We are now on the 11th minute of your meeting with the VC. And we are discussing solution. I think you can get a copy of this later. I'm going to leave it with okay. Sumi. You can take a copy. The second is the solution. So we are discussing now. So we are all agreed there is a problem. And you want the probability that I already know that approach A has got stymied. For this reason. Because Motorola has got blocking tickets as an example. Or because finally you are going to reach this part and it won't go any further. So I say, oh, okay. And I switch on. Right? What are the other approaches feasible? So after you tell me your approach, I'm going to be probing a little bit to ask, okay, you are taking approach A. What, what is possible? Is there a B, C, and D? And if you say, I don't even know and I don't care, oh, that's terrible. Because B, C, and D might be cheaper, faster to do than A. So I would have expected you, before you moved in on A, to have looked at multiple different approaches and have picked A. Right? And what's the extent of relief? Again, we come back to how much will we solve the problem. So we understood, to take the old case, without iodine, so many people get goiter. So I've got a problem, I've got a solution. I'm going to put iodine in the salt. Right? So that's the project that I'm coming up with. And you're going to say, this is not going to solve it by 100%. It's going to solve it by 80%. So tell me the extent of relief. I don't even expect that all problems will be solved 100% with every project that we take up. So quantify the relief. Tell me what's the target. We have invested in a company, and Ramesh can tell you more about it. 
later. Then they said, the problem in computing today is the power consumption. And they said, we are going to work on power consumption. And we are going to solve the power consumption problem to this degree. And the target is 90%. We are going to reduce power